Well, thank you very much, and thank you for giving up your time to be here on this Saturday. Um, I just want to start off with a question, really. I want, to think, I, I want you to think about this. Um, I've got to be also very careful. I've been told not to move away from this red spot. And I'm one of these people who likes to sort of, usually when I give lectures or talks, I like to sort of walk along and use the energy here. So I'm going to try and be very, very disciplined here. So the question for all of you, I want you to put your hand up if you've ever had a dream or an ambition or an aspiration. That's good. That's, that, that's most of you. And let me ask you a question. How many of you have actually achieved that ambition or that dream? How many of you have actually got something that's stopping you from achieving that dream? Something that someone has told you or something that you yourself have told you. Maybe you say, actually, the things like that don't happen to me. Yes, I've got this dream, but people like me don't achieve that dream. Maybe you've told yourself, well, actually, no, maybe it's my religion. It's my color. It's my, um, it's, it's, it's my background. Maybe you say it's my gender or it's my sexual orientation. You know, maybe you ask yourself those questions. Maybe people tell you, your friends, your family, your own loved ones tell you, don't be so stupid, don't be ridiculous. People like us or people like you don't go on and achieve those things. No, anyway, I'm far, you're far too busy. Go and get the shopping or pay the bill. You know, actually, you know, get on with your life. Stop, stop dreaming. I know, because I've been there. And what I want to tell you today, if this marker works, is actually, when, when someone says to you, you can't, well, I want you to knock the tea off and say, I can. I want to start by telling you a bit about myself and my background. I grew up in a very ordinary North London family. My uh, parents came to Britain in the 1950s and the 1960s. My mother uh, worked uh, in many clerical jobs. Then when she had children, she gave up work for about 12 years until we were able to let ourselves in from school. And then she went to work as a bookkeeper for a small advertising agency. My father, as you've probably heard, came to Britain, worked on the railways, and then worked on the buses as a bus driver. Um, I'm sure you've heard, you've heard the story now. Uh, Sajid Javid, the son of an immigrant bus driver. Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, the son of an immigrant bus driver. Sai Kamal, the son of an immigrant bus driver. You wait ages for the son of an immigrant bus driver. <laughs> uh, and then three come along at once. <laughs> and, when I, and, and, actually, no, and when I was younger, people used to tell me, they used to say to me, that actually, we can't achieve anything. No, my, my own friends, my, no, some of my own family used to say to me, we can't do anything. Yes, people who achieve things, actually, maybe it's because you know, we're working class. You know, actually, you look at all those people who achieve something. They work, you know, the people who work at the BBC or people elsewhere. They've all been to good schools, or they, you know, they're, they're all, you know, they're, they're toffs or they're knobs. People like us don't achieve that sort of stuff. Or maybe sometimes people say it's our colour. People said to me, you know, how many blacks and Asians do you see on TV? Uh, you know, when I was growing up in the seventies, maybe Trevor McDonald, or maybe you saw comedies where people were the sort of object of of, of fun. Maybe uh, programs like Love Thy Neighbour or Jim Davidson doing an impression. But actually, no, that was the impression. Or maybe in a few later years, people said it about your religion. You know, friends of mine used to say to me, we're Muslims. Actually, you know what happens? We, don't, we can't get on in society. You know, it's, you know, if you want to get anywhere, all the people at the top, they're either from a Christian background or, or a Jewish background. We hear it in school about this being a Judeo-Christian society. People like us don't get on. Well, my parents used to tell me, my mother and father used to say to me, there's no limit to what you can achieve if you believe in yourself and you work hard. When someone says to you that you can't achieve anything, they're showing their own limitations, not yours. My father actually, first of all, taught me this phrase, when someone tells you you can't, knock the tea off and say you can. And today, I am now, as I stand here before you, not to boast in any way, but I am the most senior elected Brit in Brussels. I am the leader of the third largest group in the European Parliament, I lead a group of 74 MEPs from 18 different countries. Um, I'm the first non-white, non-Christian leader of any political group, political group. And I still pinch myself sometimes, even just saying that now, I pinch myself when I think about that journey. And I'm not unique in any way. P many people have achieved those dreams and achieved their ambition. But what I want to talk to you today about some of the lessons that I learned along the way. And maybe, hopefully, some of those lessons might help you if you have an ambition or a dream and someone has told you that you can't do it yet. But so let me start with a few things. The first one is,
sorry, this is my handwriting actually. That says intention. Start off with a power of intention. You have to tell yourself, I intend to do this. I expect to do this. There are different ways of doing this. Some books suggest, on this subject, suggest what you do, you write down on a piece of paper your dream, you put it in a pot, you'll go back there in five or 10 years time, actually, just that power of intention, you will have achieved that dream. One of the tricks that I used, that I read in one of the, one of the books that inspired me, was actually, it said, talk about your life now in a number of different categories. Where are you now physically? Where are you romantically? Where are you uh, medically? Where are you health-wise? Where are you financially? Write all those things down. And then write where you were five years ago in each of those categories. And then next, write where you want to be in five or 10 years in all those categories. That is the power of intention. The fact that you've written it down is the first step towards achieving those dreams. The second thing is read or to be inspired. And what I mean by that is read those books, read those biographies, watch those videos of people who have achieved their dreams. It could be anyone, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, it could be Steve Jobs, it could be people like David Blunkett, who despite his blindness went on to be one of the most senior politicians in Britain. It could be, it could be some of the British Paralympians that have inspired us over, over the summer. These are people who have overcome you know, barriers or uh, people put up. These are, they may have been well told by others that they can't achieve anything, but actually by reading their story, you will find some pointers and they will inspire you. There's a whole series, if anyone goes to America, there's a whole series of inspirational speakers. Now, sometimes with our sort of British sense of modesty, if you like, you know, their books are, I'm great, you can be great too. But actually, but actually be, be inspired by those. There are some great guys out there like Tony Robbins and uh, uh, Wayne Dyer and others, and they are hugely inspirational. The third one is time. Make time to achieve your dreams. You know, we're all busy. We, we all lead very busy lives. And one of the things that actually inspired me is a diagram by Hiram W. Smith. This is supposed to be a pyramid. <laughs> you, can, you can tell when I was a lecturer that uh, I w was a bit, uh, you know, pe people often couldn't read mine. Okay. And I'm going to tell you about this pyramid. Short term, medium term, long term, and values. This is something I used myself when I wanted to achieve my dreams. The first one is, is think about your long-term goals. You may well have written them down, that power of intention. But before you go any further, think about your own long-term values. Are they, in, are they in line with your long-term values? I'll give you a, a, um, an example. I thought I wanted to be incredibly wealthy. Actually, when I had my own business and I was doing well, I used to stop working at times uh, because actually I thought I had enough money. I want to spend time with the family. So I realized that money wasn't, getting money wasn't exactly one of my highest values. And I realized time with the family and actually just relaxing was far more important to me. So you've got to make sure, if, you, if those long-term goals are going to be meaningful, make sure that they are aligned with your, with your own long-term values. Once you've got those long-term values, so long-term goals, set your medium-term goals and then your short-term goals. A very quick example from my life, I wanted to apply to be a politician. And I realized that in order to be a politician long term, in the short term, I actually had to apply, for an, make an application, do some research, work out what it was, what, what it was I was believed, who was closest to my own personal views. But you know what life is like? We spend all our time in short term. Get that essay in time. Have I done the shopping? Have I paid the bills? We get to the end of the week, and do you know something? We look back at life and I say, I've been busy doing nothing. I've done all these things, but I've achieved nothing towards my long-term goal. And one of the things you've got to do is look at your long-term goal, inform your medium-term goal, and make sure every week, every single week, that when you look back at your week, you think, I've done one thing short-term towards my long-term goal. If you don't do it, you haven't made time. The fourth one, maybe I should have sh uh, picked shorter words, is persistence. The sign of a good man or woman is the person who gets up one more time than they are knocked down. You read stories of people in life who've suffered setbacks. Setbacks are part of life. Whether you come from an incredibly, an incredibly privileged family or you come from the most humblest of backgrounds, we will all suffer setbacks in life. We all get knocked back. Each time you get knocked back, dust yourself off, get, off, get up again, and don't say to yourself, I can't, knock the tea off can't, and say, I can. 
I stood for election in 1994 for the first time in local authority in Lambeth. I lost. In 1995, I'd moved to Bath and I was asked to stand there in an election. I lost. In 2000, I stood in the GLA election. I lost. This is going somewhere, I promise you. Um, in, two, in 2001, I stood in a general election. Do you know what happened? I lost. <laughs> and in 2004, I, I stood in a European election for the first time. And guess what happened? I lost. <laughs> but a year later, I became an MEP. I was elected. That was at the age of 38, after 19 years of being a party member. People looked at me and said, you're 38, you're quite young to be a politician. But what they didn't realize was behind that story, I had joined the party 19 years early, earlier, and I had fought five elections. Get up one more time that you're knocked down. That is, that is a story to persistence. And finally, the last one is failure. Embrace failure. Learn from failure. I, you know, think about one of the industries that I love celebrating is the tech industry in London. And they've got to say, fail fast, and then you move on. Think about all those people who have failed and moved on. Think about some of those inspirational people you've read about. The, thing, you know, the people who've had setbacks in life. Think about Thomas Edison, who you know, invented, had all these inventions and actually failed a number of times. And he had a saying that goes something like this. It says, people who have failed have not realized how close they were to success before they gave up. So each time you fail, make sure you learn from that failure. Think about someone like Colonel Sanders. I'd maybe, I, I apologize to the vegetarians in the audience. But Colonel Sa Sanders, who founded Kentucky Fried Chicken, he went around with his recipe and was turned down by over a thousand restaurants in, in America. Many of you might, might say, I hoped he had failed a bit more. But actually, what happened was that, you know, eventually he found a restaurant that was prepared to take his recipe and he went on to, to build up you know, a, a fried chicken empire. I'm not saying that's your ambition, but actually that shows the story. He embraced failure. So look at those five things. Intention. Write down what you intend to do. Read. Be inspired. Make time, for your make time to realize your ambition. Be persistent. And then failure. Embrace failure. Get up one more time, then you're not down. I want to end with one thing. I want us, as I end, I want us to start that journey to achieving your goal. So I want each of you to think today about your long-term goal, and for the next 10 seconds, if I don't run out of time, I want you to, five, I've got five seconds left? Oh, I'm fine, okay. Um, fine, okay, well, I don't know, for the next two hours, I want, uh, <laughs> no, for the next, for, for the next uh, uh, 10 or 20 seconds, I want you to think about your long-term goal and think of one thing that you are gonna do each in the next seven days towards that long-term goal. Write it down, think about it, and then, I want you if, you, are, if you've thought of something, to turn to the person next to you and say to them, I promise in the next seven days, I'm going to do this one thing. Go on. <laughs> Have you all done that? You've all thought about something. How many of you, how many of you in this room have made a promise? How many of you, you've made a promise, yeah? And you're going to stick to that promise. You promised me that? Great. So you're going to promise that. So you have now, you have now taken the first step to achieving your long-term goal. You've, you've expressed the power of intention. When you leave, not now, because there are lots of other speakers, but later today, when you leave, I want you to go on the internet or go to the library or go and buy the books that, that, of those people who have inspired you, people who have achieved their goals and you, from whom you can learn. And I want, them, I want you to make sure that every week you think about this, uh, well, maybe not, but I mean, no, you think about this and you think about actually one short-term goal to your long-term objectives. I also want you to say, that I will be persistent. I will not give up. Every time that I have a setback, I will get up and I will dust myself off and I will continue. And finally, whenever you have a, a sense of failure, exam, you fail to get the job, or you know, you, uh, some, some, something hasn't gone, gone quite right in life, you actually say, I am going to learn from that. If I have to fail 99 times to achieve 100th time, 
I am one step closer. And with all those things, hopefully, when someone next time says to you, or you look in the mirror and say, I can't, you say, I'm going to knock the tea off and say, I can. Thank you. <laughs>